of the NL East. The Brewer bats will be out to show no brotherly love at all as Milwaukee tries to defend its home turf. Let's get Philly off to a rocky start. Smiles all around. The Brewers are back home. First of a three-game series, Phillies and Brewers. Next. On a gorgeous night for baseball from Miller Park, our first of a quick three-game series with the National League Eastern Division leading Philadelphia Phillies and your Milwaukee Brewers. Nice to be home. Welcome back to Miller Park. Matt Vaskersian back alongside Bill Schroeder. A tall order for the Brewers over the next few days. They've got to deal with a very good offensive club. The Philadelphia Phillies are led by the reigning NL Player of the Week. Yeah, he was smoking the baseball. Four home runs. One of the big differences with the Phillies this year is that offense. Scott Rowland, red hot. The Phillies have won seven or last ten ball games playing very good baseball. Bobby, I should say Scott Rowland, right in the middle of that order. He's got a big power packed order in front of him and behind him. Defense, offense, he's been playing well. Offense been outstanding for Scott Rowland over the last week. Four of his 14 home runs came over the past seven days. Guy's hitting the ball as well as anybody on the planet, and he'll be a handful for the Brewer pitching staff in the series. Well, the Phillies themselves have been a handful for everybody in the National League. One of the great turnaround stories in Major League Baseball is the difference between the 2001 Phillies and the version from just a year ago. Yeah, Larry Bow has got these guys playing a very aggressive style of baseball. Last year, they stole 102 bases. This year, already 118. They lost 97 ball games last year. These guys were last in runs, last in home runs. Larry Bow just has these guys playing very well. Trying to get to the postseason for the first time since 93 when they lost the World Series against the Toronto Blue Jays. The Phillies at this point in the season, August 14th, have already won as many games as they did in the entire year in 2000. As you look at the numbers, better everywhere for the Phillies. First of a three game series is on tap tonight. The Brewers took two of three in Philly in May. Alan LeVrault on the mound for the Brewers. Dave Coggin gets the nod for Philadelphia. Baseball next. CGV Channel 24 is sponsored by Toyota. See your local Toyota dealer for a vehicle that suits your needs. By Pepsi. Pepsi Cola is proud to be the choice of your Milwaukee Brewers. The joy of Pepsi. By Miller Lite. Grab a Miller Lite. It's Miller time. And by Dodge. You can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Inside Miller Park tonight, first of a three-game homestand to begin with your Brewers and the NL East's first place, Philadelphia Phillies. Welcome back to Miller Park. Always nice to be home alongside Bill Schroeder, Matt Vaskersian with you. Alan LaVrolt set to make his second start against Philadelphia this year. Allen's first against the Phillies was his first start of the season and one he'd like to get out of his mind as soon as he possibly can, a chance to do that against the Phillies here tonight. Let's check Larry Boa's lineup card this evening for the first of this three game series. Jimmy Rollins having an outstanding rookie campaign leads the National League in stolen bases leads off at shortstop Marlon Anderson and Scott Rowland follow in the top of the first Bobby Abreu Pat Burl and Travis Lee four through six Doug Glanville Johnny Estrada and Dave Coggin round out the lineup card for the Phillies tonight. Again as we mentioned on the mound making his 16th start overall and his second against the Phillies this year right hander Alan LeVrault. Well, let's check out the scouting report on the Brewer young right hander coming off a rocky outing against the Mets at Shea Stadium. Got to keep the ball in the ballpark that's been the key to LeVrault's success all season long. Got to get some good late movement on that fastball working the corners and he's got to keep that curveball down the zone. Brewers coming off a recently completed road trip at two and four between New York and Montreal. Phillies coming to us to start this series as the first of a six game skiing away from home and the first pitch of the night into Jimmy Rollins is in for strike one. Great numbers for Rollins switch hitting shortstop again in his rookie campaign. We noted off the top some of the uh, surface differences between this year's Phillies team and last year's. Some of the key personnel additions begin at the top of the order with this guy who leads off the night with a single into the opposite field. Now let's check out the Brewers Pepsi defense as inked in by manager Davey Lopes this evening. 
Brewers coming off a very good defensive performance in Montreal with Sweeney Devon White back in center field and Bernice in the outfield Lopez Hernandez Mark Loretta and Richie Sexton from third to first and behind the plate Henry Blanco. Lead off hitter aboard for the Phillies that will bring up the second baseman left handed hitter Marlon Anderson. Anderson with good numbers at the start of play as well. Phillies offense in general really upgraded itself from a miserable offensive year in 2000. So much has changed between this year's and last year's Phillies and you could start talking about it right off the top of the order once again. Yeah they get on base they steal a lot they're hitting a lot more home runs. Next to last in batting average in the National League last year last in homers last in runs but much more effective offensively this year. And it all starts with the running game. One ball and one strike to count from Allen Lavrault. Allen's last start came on the New York portion of the recently completed road trip. He took a loss in New York back on the 8th of August, pitched into the sixth inning, gave up five runs, four of them earned, but did not have any offensive support behind him that night in shape. In fact, a couple of the runs scored while Allen was in the dugout. The bullpen gave up a couple of his runs. You know, this series, speaking of that Mets series, will wrap up the Brewers' looks at the National League East. And at the start of play, the Phillies on top by a game over the Braves, by six over the still alive Florida Marlins. They put a fork in New York and Montreal. They're playing out the string. Rollins, rather, Anderson fouls away. You saw that good record by the Phillies so far this year, and a lot of their damage they've done has been against their own division 29 and 21 against the National League East and as the unbalanced schedule plays it's important to play well against your own division and they're doing that. Ball and two strikes accounts to Marlon Anderson with Rollins aboard. Jimmy Rollins again leads the National League in stolen bases so LeVrault keeping his eyes on him. Anderson behind one and two. That was fouled back. Well the Phillies and the Braves have jockeyed for position atop the NL East for the past couple of months. Neither team staying in front to stay for very long. Really the big story with the Phillies regardless of where they lie regarding the Braves is where they lie in regards to their 2000 campaign. You dial back the clock exactly a year ago today. Phillies were 21 games out of first place and done playing out the string. Yeah. Terry Francona was managing the Phillies. The Phillies decided on the change during the offseason, bringing in Larry Boa. I was considered as a firecracker type personality. It goes Rollins and a base hit slapped through the vacated hold on the left side. Runners at the corners for the Phillies right out of the gate tonight. We were talking about the first two guys in this order they get on and then you have a lot of problems the middle of this order is as good as any. Jimmy Rollins with great speed and Marlon Anderson on the hit and run this is a beauty not so much a hit and run but Anderson running shortstop Jose Hernandez covering with the left handed hitter up there and Anderson just dribbles it into left field. They execute very well. Well an early jam for Alan LeVrault to negotiate now and this is not a guy that Alan wanted to face with runners on and nobody out. Nobody hotter than this man Scott Rolden the reigning National League player of the week. He had a big series against the Brewers at the vet in May six for 14 you saw that as we set the starting lineup. He's been going crazy over the past week and a half and he takes a strike. Yeah, that's getting it done. Yeah. And he's been red hot, and one of the reasons is because of the guys behind him and the guys in front of him getting on base, seeing a lot of fastballs. And that's one of the effects when you have a lot of speed in front of you as a hitter. Now, as a catcher, you're sitting back there, and you know that Jimmy Rollins wants to run, or Marlon Anderson, and you're going to throw more fastballs, and 
hitters like Scott Rowland, they just feast on that kind of stuff. Runners at the corners for Rowland once again. The 1 1 misses down and in. The refresher course on Rowland's player of the week numbers 12 hits in 22 at bats. Four of his 14 home runs came within the past week. And there are a lot of people around the Phillies camp taking credit for Rowland's big August and seeming resurgence into the uh, into the autumn of the 2001 season. Apparently there was a uh, well a challenge if you will placed on Scott Rowland. A guy who uh, used to run the show with the New York Mets Dallas Green who's a special advisor to general manager Ed Wade called Rowland out a bit challenged him if you will. There's ball four to him. And whether it's a convenient story for the media or otherwise, since that challenge was levied, Roland has really responded. Yeah, do you want to be the leader of this ball club or not, right? By example, not by lip. Not that Scott Roland is a mouthy kind of guy, but the kind of leadership that is most respected by your teammates, doing it on the field day in and day out. Certainly the kind of a guy that can do it. He can hit, and he's a gold glove third baseman. Whatever kind of career years the Phillies are having individually, the guy due up now with the bases loaded has been a consistent factor in the Philly lineup over the past three years. Bobby Abreu leads the Phillies with a 300 average, their leading home run hitter, their leading RBI man. Abreu has averaged. Better than 20 home runs and better than 20 stolen bases now for three straight years in a Philly uniform. And a chance to put some early hurt on the Brewers. Bases loaded in the top of the first. If you go back to Allen's last start in New York, he did have a rough first inning. Got away virtually unscathed, but then pretty much settled down until that seventh inning. Having a rough go of it here in the first. Was two runs in New York in the first inning and then settled down and couldn't get out of the sixth inning. Again, Allen's first start against the Phillies this year. Back on the 15th of May, his first start of the season was a rough one. And the biggest problem for LeBron that night, unlike tonight, so far, the home run ball, he gave up four of them. A season high in his first start of the year. That was a game the Brewers won. A 14 to 2 slugfest at Veterans Stadium that night. And at the time we were saying this is not a team that hits a lot of home runs, but not going to say that now. A high fly ball off Bob Abreu's bat. Devon White in short center field now. Makes the catch. Jimmy Rollins can run well. He'll score on that ball, and the Phillies take a one-nothing lead. Execute fundamentally very well, but I imagine that the Brewers would take that any day with a Brayu up there and a sacrifice fly could have been a lot worse. Boy, hitters love it when a man that fast is on third base and a shallow fly ball to center. Aren't too many guys are going to try and score on that. So on the first out of the game, Phillies have taken a one nothing lead. Here's Pat Burrell now. Anderson at second, rolling at first. First pitch to Pat Burrell misses outside. Second year man came up as a first baseman. He's played mostly outfield for the Phillies in his brief year and a half of veteran stadium tenure. He has adapted to the outfield rather well in addition to some big power numbers. Burrow leads all National League outfielders in assists. 2 and 0. I guess the National League is challenging Burrow a little bit defensively and he has certainly proven that he's up to the task. 17 home runs 67 RBIs but he does have a lot of holes in that swing. He strikes out quite a bit. He's got a left handed hitter on deck behind him on top of LeBrault 2 and 0. We mentioned this is the first of a six game trip for the Phillies. Three here in Milwaukee tonight, tomorrow night, and then on Thursday afternoon. 
Then they head to St. Louis for the weekend. There's a strike two and one. The Brewers will be here for this series before taking off Thursday after the series finale with Philadelphia. Three in Cincinnati. And then a long series of games in Chicago. Five games in four days. Brewers have a doubleheader on Monday. Three balls and a strike to Pat Burrow. Chicago Cubs have vacated their seat atop the National League Central after a long stretch of being in first place. These pennant races are getting good, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, this is really shaped up. Used to be by up. what? Half a game? A very fun season to watch. Half game on top of the Central. Here's a 3 1 home to Burrow. Swung on and lined out to left. Hit well. Mark Sweeney back on it in the gap. He looks up and it's off the wall. Anderson scores from second. Rolling to third, a booming RBI double from Pat Burrell, 2 0 Phillies. Well, it looked like that ball was going to get out of here, but it hit the top of the fence. Scott Rowland has to stop at third base. Boy, a fastball middle in, and that's just a wheelhouse for Pat Burrell. Likes that fastball in, not too comfortable going the other way with it. Sweeney able to play it off the wall perfectly and only one run scores. Rolling and Burl aboard now with two runs in, only one away for left handed hitter Travis Lee. Lee struggled in that May series between the Brewers and Phillies at the vet just two hits in 13 at bats as you can tell the overall numbers are pretty good. But over the past couple of weeks Travis Lee has cooled off a bit. The infields in for him. That pitch is lined to center and hit well Devon White back on this one to put it away. It'll tag and score Scott Rowland three nothing Phillies. Everything up in the zone for Allen here in the first inning in New York he had troubles keeping the ball down in the first. Mentioned he gave up two runs but after that a lot of ground ball outs from LeBron. Up in the strike zone with all that stuff but able to keep it in the ballpark at least. Another run across. Bring up Doug Glanville now. Seven hitters have come to the plate in the top of the first inning against Alan LeBron tonight, and there's a strike to Glanville. Boy, talk about taking a crowd out of a game, huh? Deathly quiet here at Miller Park. Glanville dropped down to the bottom third of the Phillies order with the emergence of Jimmy Rollins as a leadoff man. That's a place that the Phillies like him a whole lot more. The only knock on Glanville maybe is a player overall the fact that it doesn't draw a lot of walks. Perhaps less suited to lead off than Rollins Glanville hitting in the seven hole tonight. He's got a man in scoring position with two away a ball and two strikes now from LeBron. And one of the reasons that Glenville not the leadoff hitter anymore is that on base percentage at 290 has not been walking as much as Larry Bow would like and plus Jimmy Rollins doing a heck of a job getting on base and running. Whatever Larry Bow has done it's working. Burl off second and then what's found away again. You know in the Phillies this year were dealt a few blows that would have crippled perhaps less spirited groups. Their all star catcher Mike Lieberthal was lost for the year in May. In fact that information was discovered the day the Brewers got to town in Philadelphia in mid May. Lieberthal undergoing reconstructive knee surgery gone for the year. And you take a player of Lieberthal's caliber away from any lineup and that's a big blow. More on the Phillies resurgence as we continue. Alan LeBron faces seven fills in the first three runs in the first inning. Three nothing Philly. Miller Park. The Phillies go and get three to lead off the ball game. Let's check Davey Lopes' lineup card tonight against Dave Coggin. 
Brewers go right, left, right, left, or in this case, switch hitter right, left. It'll be Devon White, a switch hitter, right-handed hitter Mark Loretta, lefty Jeremy Burnett's, right-handed hitter Richie Sexton, lefty Mark Sweeney, right-handed hitter Jose Hernandez, switch hitter Louis Lopez, right-handed hitter Henry Blanco, right-handed hitter Alan LeBron. Just thought I'd do that to change it up a little bit. That was bit. nice. Yeah. Good change of pace. Thanks. Dave Coggin on the mound for the Phillies tonight. Devon White leads things off for the Brewers. Devo followed by Loretta and Burnett. The Brewers try to get some back here early tonight. Well, let's check out the scouting report on Dave Coggin. He's got a good fastball. He throws it, has good movement on it, low 90s. Very aggressive. He throws strike, doesn't walk too many. He's only walked three batters in his last three starts. So the Brewers better go up there thinking about swinging that bat tonight. Coggins coming off a good one, a winner against the San Diego Padres back on the 8th of August. Two balls in his track to Devon White. Well, that wrench back, hopefully behind Devo for the remainder of the season. Hurt his back in the first game of the road trip in New York and was unable to start thereafter. He was used as a pinch hitter throughout the road trip, but back in the starting lineup for the first time in about a week. Yeah, it didn't help that the Brewers are playing on AstroTurf in Olympic Stadium. Not too good on that back or knees. That one's popped up for Scott Rold and one away. Well, let's check out the Phillies' Pepsi defense, the best fielding percentage in all of the National League. Are the Philadelphia Phillies with Burl, Glanville, and Abreu in the outfield? Scott Rowland, Jimmy Rollins, Marlon Anderson, and Travis Sleep in third to first. And behind the plate, Johnny Estrada. Diamondbacks and Astros fielding the ball well. The Phillies on top of the pack in the National League, as Bill mentioned. Here's Loretta now with one away. Low hit in the last four games on the road trip. Batting average of better than 320 since the All Star break. 2 0 from Dave Coggin. Now, bear in mind, we, we made mention of it and referenced it a little bit in the top of the first. The Brewers took two of three against the Phillies in mid May. And on the first two nights, winners for the Brewers did so in rather convincing fashion. So the last image that a lot of these Philly folks have of the Brewers is of a big hitting. Swagger in their walk type team. And the same question that those people are asking, those from Philly at the start of this series, is what happened to you guys? Well, what happened, and looking out on that lineup, saying, who are these guys? Now, a lot of the guys that were swinging the bats for the Brewers back in May aren't there anymore. Jeff Jenkins on a disabled list, Tyler Hughes, you can see those guys. Jeffrey Hammonds, the list goes on and on. Money Belliard. Loretta bounces out to third for Scott Rowland. Two gone. Two quick outs for Dave Cog, and that'll bring up Burnitz. Bernie's hit in seven a row to start the homestand. Coggin ready to work with the bases empty in the first pitch to Burnett's misses low. The numbers throughout the seven game streak a couple of home runs at 321 average for Jeremy. Confusing as ever when you look at the Brewers splits reading into the statistics. Most of the Brewer hitters better numbers here at home as opposed to away from Miller Park not the case with Jeremy. He has really struggled at Miller Park this year inexplicably hovering around the 200 average at home. No rhyme or reason until you talk to Burnitz about it or ask him what do you think it is. He's the only one to talk about. It. Brad Crew would love to love to know what the deal is. The aforementioned splits on Burnitz and he takes a strike. Nothing wrong with the power numbers here at home just has not hit for the average here at Miller Park. Two points schedule of games by the way in the major list and we'll get the score a little later on.
prices are good. There's only one that's not. And that's in the American League West. Seattle just fine tuning for their playoffs. 2 2 to Jeremy punched into short left. Burl coming on. He won't have a play on that one. Jeremy running hard out of the box. He'll turn that into a two base hit. Well, two Cog out double. Yeah, if Dave Coggin has one problem, it could perhaps be when he's got two outs and nobody on, he might let down a little bit. Hung a breaking ball to Jeremy there, who really didn't get much of it. He just fought it off. A little inside out swing off the handle of the bat. And dumped it in the left. We got two outs and nobody on against this guy. Bear down because the inning's not over. He has a tendency to let up a little bit. You know, something we noticed with Burnitz on the recently completed trip success into the opposite field with two strikes. How about Sexton on the first pitch home, trying to single home Jeremy? He'll do just that as the throw from Burl's cut off and the Brewers get one of them back immediately tonight. Yeah, nice to get a couple more, but two outs and nobody on a Burnitz bloop double and now a base hit on the first pitch to Richie. And the Brewers get one back. That's a big run. Even if that's the only run they get here in the first, it's telling the Phillies, hey, we're not going to go away silently. That was a slider that hung up in the strike zone inside part of the plate, and Richie continues to swing a good bat. And drives Burnitz in with two outs. Here's Mark Sweeney now. Two out double, two out RBI single, and the Brewers are within two runs. The RBI for Sexton, by the way, his team leading 78th of the year. Pitch misses high. Two balls and no strikes to Mark Sweeney. Sweeney with big career numbers against the Philadelphia Phillies as a Red, as a Padre, as a Brewer last year. Has really swung the bat well against Philly. Takes his strike two and one. Career, a 360 average against Philadelphia. And in more than just a handful of games to boot. Well, the Philly pitching staff has not been the greatest in the last few years. Even last year, they weren't that good. Still this year, struggling a bit, but the offense and defense making up for it. Bounces second to his right. Anderson knocks it down, recovers, and gets him at first. The Brewers do get one of those runs back early on the RBI single from Richie Sexton to the second already three to one Philadelphia. Go photo nights coming up tomorrow. You can take pictures of your favorite Brewers by the stands before the game. Bring a camera and come and see the Brewers and Phillies tomorrow. 902 4000 get here early. That thing starts before the game tomorrow. And uh, while we're thinking of it happy 30th birthday to Mark Loretta. 30 already huh. 30 years old. Been around here a long time. He is the uh, longest tenured player in uniform. He is the senior citizen, the salty old veteran for the Brewers. At 30. Here's Johnny Estrada to lead things off in the second inning against Alan LeBron. You know, I was down in the uh, in the clubhouse before the game talking to a few guys about when it goes bad regarding Loretta's 30th birthday. 30, although it's a benchmark number, for me, it wasn't as big a deal at 24. 24 was when it happened for me. That's 24. when the, the dentist told me you got to start using a tartar control toothpaste. That's when, you know, somebody would say, hey, you got some nose hairs working there. You got to start grooming a little better. <laughs> That's when headaches get worse. That's when backaches start. You're depressing me, partner. 24. You know, I'm 40 plus. I have not had any of those symptoms. Really? No. You're not using a tartar control toothpaste yet? Oh, yeah, I'm doing that, but. I don't have the nose hair problem. <laughs> Grounded to second base for Loretta. Birthday boy converts and there's one gone. 
tune us in early tomorrow for the second game of this series. Pre-game coverage begins at 6.30 right here on Fox Sports Net as the Brewers take on Scott Rowland and the Phillies. Game time, 7 o'clock. Pre-game with our friend Craig Gashawn, 6.30 tomorrow night. Join us then. No baby over there yet? Guess not. Craig Gashawn and his lovely wife expecting a, a child. Might be doing that show solo tomorrow. That could be you in an empty seat next to you. Yeah, that's scary. It's usually Craig in an empty seat. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Coggin with one away. He's one for 17 as a hitter this year. A swing and a miss on LeBron's in front of him. 0 oh and 2. This guy's quite the athlete. We talked about your alma mater in Montreal this weekend, partner, but here's another guy that could have been a Clemson Tiger. Turned down a scholarship to quarterback that club. They go after the good athletes. They got a guy down there now that's a heck of an athlete. A little comebacker. LeBron's on it. And there were two away. Woody Dantzler runs that single wing. Yeah. So two gone for LeBron. It's back to the top of the order now. The switch hitter Jimmy Rollins. If not for the huge runaway year that Albert Pujols got off to in April and May with the St. Louis Cardinals, you'd be hearing this guy's name mentioned a whole lot more in terms of Rookie of the Year candidacy. I still think this guy's a serious candidate. No doubt. There's still a couple of months left. Uh, six weeks left. So many people just wrote that thing off for Pujols early in the year. There's a ground ball for Loretta. And Alan LeBron responds nicely with a 1 2 3 top of the second. Heading and a half gone, 3 to 1 Philly. Last in the series of bobblehead dog giveaways is coming up on Sunday, August 26th, as the Brewers take on the Rockies. The Robin Yount bobblehead doll will be given away to the first 10,000 kids ages 14 and under. Come on out and get that one, kids. Jose Hernandez leads things off in the bottom half of the second for the Brewers Hernandez Lopez and Blanco against Dave Coggin. Brewers down three to one early tonight. Hernandez coming off a rough series in Montreal two for his last 11. The Expo pitching staff kept him in check. Two and one to Jose. That Jose had in that series all came to right field. We've been saying that all year long. And Jose thinks right field. He has a lot of success. Base hits. Certainly has the power to knock one out of here to right field. It's easier to implement that than it seems, or much tougher, I should say. Everybody knows it. Jose goes up there and he knows that he's got to go to right field, but always had a tendency to pull that front shoulder and try and jerk everything to left. Chopped out to second base for Marlon Anderson who boots it. Oh, one of the better defensive guys at second base that the National League has to offer has trouble with a routine ground ball. And only 61 errors for the Philadelphia Phillies coming into action here tonight. And this is a routine when Anderson waits back on it. It took a funny hop on him, hit him in the belly. Oh, there's a big difference between the swing and the miss with two strikes and putting the ball in play. Give yourself a chance to get on base. At one point this season, Marlon Anderson had a 30 game errorless streak at second base. Here's Louis Lopez now with the leadoff hitter aboard. Just the kind of opportunity Davey Lopes is looking for to get back in this game early. Lopez is hit in four straight. Everyday playing time due to a variety of injuries among position players. There goes Hernandez. Look at Coggin behind the back. Fancy stuff. That's outstanding, isn't it? We don't practice that in spring training. That ball going up the middle. Had he not got it, might have been a double play because that ball was going to roll right to second base. And look what I found. Thought about two. Got the sure out of first base, but Hernandez is able to get in the scoring position. Well, spin around, throw the glove back there, see what it hits, and it finds the baseball. It 
Louis in the dugout saying you shouldn't be able to do that. <laughs> that ain't cool. Wouldn't have been a base hit anyway because it might have been even a double play. The way that ball was ticketed right to second base. Ball and no strikes to Henry Blanco with a runner at second and one away. And one and one to Henry. Figure Henry to get a whole lot of playing time. The rest of the stretch. Raul Casanova out with a bad knee. No telling when he's going to be back. Hobbling around down there. Kevin Brown, a catcher from AAA, was recalled from Indianapolis. So you figure Henry's going to get some playing time. Might Jerry be just Fowler. the thing he needs. Get some consistent at bats. Get himself going offensively. Talked to Cash before the ball game today, and he said he feels a whole lot better than the way he felt up in Montreal. Still not comfortable, still not able to play, but he's not in the kind of pain and discomfort that he was over the weekend. It was kind of a funny situation. He was rounding third to head home on a base hit. Didn't look like he hurt himself, but after he crossed home plate, really hobbling to get into the dugout. Brewers had to put him on the disabled list. Henry holds up. Well, apparently there were a lot of things happening with uh, with Raul's knee. He said once the doctors looked at him, they found they found a cyst in the knee that had been giving him trouble. There was cartilage scraping on cartilage. The good news was that there's no ACL damage in uh, the Casanova injured knee. Swing and a miss by Henry Blanco, and they're two gone. I think you'd be hard pressed to look into the knee of any catcher and not find some kind of problem. Yeah. But you're right. I think that the fact that there's no ligament damage, at least anything they can detect at this time, is a very good sign. That's a good slider from Coggin and Henry way out in front. Henry had a tough time waiting back on Coggin that entire at bat. Is this the night? Alan Lavrault, 0 for 21, still looking for his first major league hit. Base hit here would drive it a run. Hernandez at second with two gone. Three to one Phillies. Three runs on three hits for Philadelphia. A couple of runs on two hits for the Brewers early tonight. The Brewers have committed, rather than Phillies, have committed an error in the field. Marlon Anderson gaffed one starting the inning. One and one to LeBron. Nobody real concerned with Alan Lavrault or any of the Brewer pitchers. They going uh, 0 for 1 for 2 for. He'd love those base hits out of that ninth spot. There it is. First base hit of his career. They're going to hold Hernandez. The Burrow rather in left was playing him good and tight. And there's no way Hosey would have scored on that ball. But the skunk is out of the box. Yeah. Go ahead Alan. Smile a little bit. I figured they're going to roll that baseball into the dugout to let the ball keep that one, put it on the fireplace. There's a smile. This ball hit a little bit too hard, and as you mentioned, the outfield pretty shallow for LeVrault. That's why Jose had no chance of scoring. Watch where Jose is when Burl ends up catching the baseball. He's standing right on third base, not even yet. Good job by Gary Allenson to hold him up. There's a couple of hits in that swing. You knew that was coming. The hanging slider that time, and LeBron jumped all over it. So again, with two outs, Kagan having a tough time putting the Brewers away. Here's Devon White now. He popped out to third base to start the bottom of the first inning tonight. Runners at the corners, one with two away. Home run the Brewers have hit against the Phillies this year in that three game series at the Vet in May, courtesy of Devon White. Hard to 
to believe that the Brewers had a couple of those big games, including the 14 to 10 win to start the series without a home run that day. Yeah. One home run, a three game series. Two and two. And ordinarily, that's the way the Brewers score their runs. Almost half the runs this year resulting from home runs. That almost seems like a different season, doesn't it? I'm yeah. sure Davey would agree. Back in May when things were clicking, guys were healthy. There's a check swing by Devo. Strike three as Estrada applies the tag, and that'll do her in the Brewers' second. A hit and an error. The Brewers leave two aboard. We play two complete. Three to one, Phillies. This week, the Brewers round out this series with the Phillies tomorrow and then with a day game, a day game telecast on Thursday. And then all three in Cincinnati, starting with a 6 o'clock telecast on WCGV and on Fox Sports Net Friday from Synergy Field. Again. It's our third trip, isn't it? In between Cincinnati and Pittsburgh, believe me, we will be seeing a lot of those same old cities. Here's Marlon Anderson to lead things off in the Phillies third. Anderson rolled in an Abreu. Singleton scored and committed an error on the other side of the scorecard last half inning. That one slid out to third. And Louis Lopez gets him one away. Almost a carbon copy of the start that LeBron had in New York. Keeping the baseball down after a rough first inning. Scoring first inning runs, one of the areas that the Phillies have really improved in from last year's team. You know, there's not a whole lot that you can read into a number like that. But last season, the Phillies scored a total of 69 first inning runs. They've already matched that total this year. And they've done it in 45 fewer games. It's an offense that will come out swinging right out of the gate, as we've seen. 0 oh 2 to Scott Rowland. Get those first two guys on the bases, and opposition going to throw a lot of fastballs to the likes of Rowland, Abreu, and Burrell. Ball gets to the catcher a lot quicker. Catcher wants to throw him out. And guys like Rowland like the heater. Did LeBron get an assist on that play? Allen touched that ball, or did it just knuckle right to Mark Loretta? Yeah, breaking ball right on the end of the bat from Scott Rowland. Little cue shot. This ball is going to be like a slice. He slices it, has some funny spin on it, and heading toward Loretta as it gets out to the outfield. Well, it almost looked like, certainly on the replay, it wasn't even close to Allen, but it knuckled over there so quickly it took a sharp turn, two away. Here's Abreu now. And I want to correct something that I had mentioned getting into the break, the fact that the Brewers hadn't hit any home runs but Devon White's in that series at the vet in May that not true the home runs came from guys that are currently on the disabled list so we didn't have that information in front of us. I know Tyler Houston had a home run in the series Tony Fernandez was with the club back then. So strike that from the record. Done. No, you know, Tony Fernandez is now with the Toronto Blue Jays again. What's that his fourth or fifth stint up there. Yeah. He is to the Blue Jays what Ricky Henderson is to the A's. <laughs> Leaves and goes back all the time. Those two teams are meeting tonight in Toronto, by the way. Those are among the scores you'll be seeing on your screen in just a bit. Ball and two strikes to Bobby Abreu. Drove in a run with a sacrifice fly back in the first. The Phillies with their two sacrifice flies in the first inning. Now have 52. That leads the National League. A lot of stolen bases, a lot of sacrifice flies. So Richie Hadner, the hitter, hitting instructor for the Phillies, doing a very good job right from the outset in spring training, getting these guys thinking about good fundamentals. Two balls and two strikes to Bobby Abreu. Foul back. This guy's done good work against the Brewers throughout his career. 323 hitter against Milwaukee. And as good and consistent as he's been over the past two plus years, he 
has a chance to set a new home run and RBI career high again this year. Well, he's got a good supporting cast around him just like he did when he was an Astro. Of course when he was with the Houston Astros he was hitting in the Astrodome not a very good hitters ballpark but the vet in Philadelphia very good hitters park. Ball jumps out of there particularly in the daytime. Take a look at Richie Hebner there. And there's ball four to Abreu. You know you could say the Astros would wish they'd have a guy like uh, like Bobby Abreu back. Just wouldn't be room for another hitter and that's the reason that the Astros made him available a few years ago when the Devil Rays joined the league. Recall that Bobby Abreu for a very brief period of time was Tampa Bay property. They selected him in their expansion draft and they turned around and traded him to the Phillies. It's Tampa Bay that wishes they had him back. Yeah. Good young player like Bobby Abreu, yeah. Here's Pat Burrell now. He drove in a run with a big double in the top of the first. Tampa Bay decided to go a little bit different way. They got a bunch of veteran players toward the end of their careers with established names, but I guess that was a mistake. Ball and no strikes on Pat Burrell. Yeah, I think remember who it was. Now I gotta look it up. The guy they traded Abreu for. Middle infielder. Remember? I gotta look up his name now. Mm -hmm. Doggone it, I can't remember who it was. Kevin Stocker. Kevin Stocker, who's not even around anymore. It's a good deal for Philadelphia. Oh, good, you bet. If you remember at the time a couple of years ago Kevin Stocker really started to make a name for himself. Pretty good shortstop. Knocked the ball around for that one particular year but that was it. Two and one to the guy they call Pat the Bat. There goes Abreu he's got good wheels throw down from Henry Blanco not in time. For Bobby Abreu, his 30th stolen base of the year, he's got a good chance of becoming the franchise's first ever 30 30 man. Yeah, he's got 24 home runs already in the bank. 30 home runs. That's not a very big lead, but he gets a good jump, and Henry's throw sails on him a little bit. Got underneath the baseball and sailed to the right field side of the bag, and Abreu in with a stolen base. These Phillies have run wild in 2001. Chance for Burl to play to run now. And he takes ball four. Back to back, two out walks. You get a guy like Pat Burl up there with two outs, and you're on first. You better make sure you're going to make it at second. Is Pat Burrell very capable of going deep. You don't want to make it out on the bases when you've got a home run hitter up there with two two outs. Checking our Dodge leaderboard at the start of play, National League stolen base leaders, team stolen bases. Phillies right on top of the pack. 118 stolen bases entering tonight. San Diego and Colorado are closest, and they're not even that close. And then what makes that stat even more impressive, the fact that the Phillies have been caught stealing the least amount. Most stolen bases haven't been caught nearly as much as any other team. So their percentage very good. They've caught, been caught 28 times this year. It's incredible. Well, that guy liked to run as a player, and Larry Boa likes to do the same kind of thing as a manager. Oh, and two the count to Travis Lee. Blanco wants it on the outside corner. One and two. Well, here's another stolen base number regarding the Phillies. They've got three guys with over 20 steals this year. The first time they've had that. Since 1986, there's a chance they could end the season with four players with 20 or more stolen bases, and they haven't had that kind of thing since 1979. Names like Gary Maddox, Bake McBride, Pete Rose, and Larry Boa. Mm -hmm. Pink McBride. Yeah, he was a Philly when I was growing up in New Jersey. Pink McBride and Gary Maddox flip down, flip down sunglasses and huge afros. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
full count to Travis Lee. There's a payoff home. Runners go, and Lee strokes it into the opposite field. Mark Sweeney started in. He's got a long way to go to catch up to it, and he can't make the play. That's going to clear the bases. Travis Lee took that one deep into the opposite corner, a two-run double, and it's 5-1 for the Phillies. Boy, three RBIs for Travis Lee. Not a very good route on that fly ball from Mark Sweeney. That's a ball you got to catch out there. Sweeney hobbling a little bit. He got taken out of a ball game in his last home stand, the Brewers here at Miller Park. A cramp. Good piece of hitting by Travis Lee, making good contact, going right with it. And Travis Lee to the deep part of left field. Sweeney kind of surrounded that ball. Didn't take a very good angle on it and ended up with a double. Well, Roger Kaplan here from the Sweeney's all blooded up. He looks like the Y.A. Tittle photograph. Well, he was limping around like he twisted his ankle, but it was the lip that was giving him the problem. So Lee at second after the two run double now for Doug Glanville the strikeout victim his last time up first ball swinging here he lines to Burnett so that'll retire the side. Phillies do more damage. Two runs on just one hit a man left aboard to the bottom of the third five to one Philly. A face Mark Loretta Jeremy Burnett's and Richie Sexton for the Brewers. The slider starts Loretta with strike one. Mark bounced to third in his first at bat tonight. One ball, one strike. We mentioned how Dave Coggin, as you see, Mark Sweeney perhaps getting some work on that uh, bloody lip. Roger Kaplinger taking him into the clubhouse for work. We mentioned Dave Coggin was a uh, big time high school quarterback. Prospect turned down a full ride to Clemson. Both of his parents were Clemson people. And it must have been a tough decision for him to say no to go and play at his parents' alma mater, but the Phillies made it worth his while selecting him as a supplemental draft choice in 95. That's a draft choice that a team gets between the first and second round as compensation for losing a type A free agent. Swing and the miss by Mark Loretta. One going. Are you kidding me? This week on Beyond the Glory, it's a Mother's Day tribute. Am I reading the right thing? <laughs> Mother's Day tribute beyond the glory Sunday at 8 right here on Fox Sports and I just read what they tell me that's all Mother's Day in August it happens every day is Mother's Day isn't it that's right should be should be that's right here's Bernie a high fly ball to right too high for Bernie's tastes here tonight and a break he makes to catch Did you see Beyond the Glory last night, by the way? I did not. I wasn't home. Buster Douglas? No, Bill Buckner. I thought we were promo and Buster Douglas all week. That's what I thought. Well, the Buster Douglas one we did was for Sunday. Oh, that's right. Last Yesterday was, was Monday. Monday. Okay, you're right. I don't ever remember promoing a Bill Buckner one. It was good. Early in the year we did. Did we? Yeah. There's Sexton now with two gone and the base is empty. Burnett's just missing a home run in that last at bat. Hit that one a little too high to get out. Home runs have not been the kind of thing that have troubled Dave Coggin at all this year. He's allowed only three in over 50 innings of work. Pedro Martinez and Terry Adams, the only two who two have allowed fewer. Owens ground to the third. Scott Rowland takes care of section to make for a one, two, three, bottom of the third. We head to the fourth tonight at Miller Park. Five-one Philly.
Dog One Phillies as Johnny Estrada leads off the fourth inning for the visitors. Estrada, Coggin, and Rollins here top four. Five runs on four hits and an error for the Phillies. A run on three hits for the Brewers through three. Johnny Estrada into the corner and right. Bernie plays it against the wall. Estrada lumbering into second with a leadoff double here in the fourth. Estrada in his first at bat took one very deep but very foul. So he's zeroing in very well on Alan LeBron tonight. First pitch didn't waste any time. Henry wanted it inside, got out of half of the plate, and Estrada ripped it down the line for a leadoff double. Bernie made it pretty close playing that ball off the wall, but Estrada, even a catcher, runs pretty well. Leadoff hitter in scoring position, and that'll bring up the pitcher, Dave Coggin, with a chance to help himself. Taking a look at some of the scores we talked about from around the American and National League. A lot of games in progress in the American at this hour. You know, back to Johnny Estrada for a moment. Earlier tonight, we talked about how the Phillies were dealt a severe blow when they learned that their all star catcher, Mike Lieberthal, would miss the season with reconstructive knee surgery. At the time, Philly management. General Manager Ed Wayne and Manager Larry Boa said, well, we're going to hand the job to this Johnny Estrada kid. It's it's time for him to show us what he's got. There's not a lot of depth at that position. If Estrada tells us or shows us that he can't handle the work, then maybe we'll go out and get a veteran catcher. But for the time being, it's his gig. And he's responded pretty well. Yes, he has. The long ball has handled the pitching staff very well, and he's a switch hitter, which makes it a little bit easier on Larry Boa when there's a tough righty or lefty out there. Todd Pratt, the backup catcher. A veteran who can come up with some big hits, so you get a little bit of youth and some experience behind the plate for the Phillies. One and two to Coggin. He gets the bunt down on two strikes. LeBron's going to try it at third, and he throws it away. Score that as a sacrifice, E1, and it's six to one, Phillies. Well, good throw is going to get him, but what happened? Well, he grabbed the baseball, did Alan Lavrault double clutch. He couldn't get it out of his glove. At that point, he should have gone to first base to get the shore out. Right there. Had trouble getting it out of the glove. He spiked it over to Jose or Lopez at third base. Estrada scores, still nobody out, and the pitcher, Coggin, unable to get over to second base. So the double play is still in order. Jimmy Rollins is singled and scored tonight in two at bats and he takes strike one. Second error of the game the first by a Brewer. Johnny Estrada scores after the leadoff double. I mean, can you remember a time just as, a, as an aside and as a former catcher where there were as many switch hitting catchers in the game as there are right now. Not too many. You got uh, Todd Hundley, Chad Pruder. Mm -hmm. I guess Hundley doesn't count anymore. No, he doesn't switch hit. Uh, you know, I'm going to count. I'm going to go ahead and count. <laughs> because, I mean, he switched hit for so many years in his career. That man right there, Raul Casano. Yeah. You got Johnny Estrada, who we got to be missing one or two. Yeah, we're missing a bunch. There weren't too many. Ted Simmons was a switch hitter. Terry Kennedy, a switch hitter. Terry Kennedy, that's a good call. But anybody who tries to tell you that baseball players aren't athletes and you, you hear the haters you know people that, that don't understand or enjoy baseball haters we call them talk about how baseball players aren't please take a look at any switch hitting catcher. Yeah that might be the toughest of all athletic tasks save the ambidextrous pitcher the Greg Harris of the world right I, mean, I, I don't know. If you can find something more impressive than that, go ahead and show me. Well, the toughest thing to do in all of sports is to hit a round ball with a round bat and hit it square. Every now and then, you might get a pitcher that may be a tad overweight, maybe a little bit chunky, but baseball players in very good shape. They have to be for 162 ball games. And Alan Raw walks yet another, really scuffling here tonight. 
four walks by LeBron tonight. Problem against the Felix. Yeah, that that had really been a tough place for the Brewers to play the first couple of years in the league. 73 total pitches for Allen here, three plus into it. Still nobody out in the top of the fourth. Marlon Anderson lines into center. It carries all the way out to Devon White. One away. Yeah, Allen not fooling anybody here tonight. Save a few ground balls, second and third inning. Philadelphia getting a pretty good look at Allen's pitches here. Up in the strike zone, they're hitting him hard. Here's Scott Rowland now, the reigning National League Player of the Week. 0 for 1, walk and a run scored tonight. Speaking of the vet, did you see that deal yesterday with the uh, football game they couldn't play because of that bad turf? With the Ravens and the, the Eagles, players said they couldn't play. Turf all chewed up. That's a first. Brand new AstroTurf, brand new field setup that'll uh, last for the short remainder of veteran stadiums lifespan that place is coming down mercifully within the next couple of years horrible facility awful and uh, the players wouldn't play because the, the new football turf they rolled down over the baseball field the seams were sticking out it was uneven yeah what they have to do is they got to take the sliding pitch out of the bases you know first second third it's just a big square there's Astor turf around the remainder of the infield take the mound out and those areas that have to be passed pretty much right in the middle of the football field and they just couldn't get a level and the turf was all messed up seems oh. players thought it was a little bit too risky pretty good chance of injuring yourself and they just said we're not playing yeah. they had a packed house over there they just said we're shutting it down angry Forget people it. as angry as people are in Philly anyway really angry yeah. when when an event they bought a ticket for doesn't go down as scheduled. Yeah. Here's a one two to roll and got him swinging. Two away for the brawl here in the fourth. You know by all accounts it was the Eagles players that started that whole match wasn't it. I think it was. Yeah. Oh, fastball middle in. Henry wanted it away and Roland just swung right through it. That was a mistake. He didn't want it there, but he got away with it. Thirds tonight from Alan LeBron. He gives up six runs on five hits, four walks. One of the big problems that Allen had today. And he'll turn it over early to the bullpen. Left hander Lance Painter is called on with two out in the inning. Well, he's got to get a Brayo to get the Brewers out of this fourth inning in his ninth game. One and no record, 426 ERA from Painter. Who continues to throw the baseball better with each outing. Lance getting himself back to full health. Hoping that he can finish the season strong. Do some work on that shoulder, get the arm in good shape for next year. And come back and make a big impact here in Milwaukee. There's a strike home to Bobby Abreu. Abreu has scored a run, driven in another, stolen a base. Big breaking ball in for a strike, going two. You now I was talking to Lance coming back from Montreal and uh, the process that everybody had to go through getting out of customs. You know, international travel with a, a Major League Baseball team and a traveling party 50 strong at times is not an easy task. Lance is an ex Blue Jay. Had to go through that every trip. You take for granted the people that play in Toronto and Montreal. Every time they leave home, they've got to go through that rigmarole. Yeah, well, when the Brewers were in Vancouver to Triple A, I played in Triple A. Had to do that everywhere you went. And you do it in Triple A on commercial aircraft. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. The play is caught looking. Lance Painter finishes things off in the fourth. One more for the Phillies, however, a run on two hits and error, two left on. 6 1 Phillies. Milwaukee Brewer Baseball on WCGB Channel 24 is sponsored by the Wisconsin Lottery and by True Value. Help is just around the corner. 
might call true value tonight. Four. Got peanut shells all over my lap. <laughs> they want shop backs up here. How about that shot? What a gorgeous night. That humidity finally got out of the area, and it has been beautiful. Was that the Hank Aaron golf outing yesterday up at Bristlecone Pine? Yeah, what, a, what a great day. Unbelievable. How'd you hit him? Not bad. A little bit better than I hit him at Robin's outing, but of course, that's not saying a whole lot. But no, Reggie Jackson was out there. Was he really? Reggie Jackson, Dave Kingman was there. Oh, you would have kidding. been in absolute hog heaven. That's oh, what you get man. for not going, partner. Dave well, Kingman, listen, Reggie it, Jackson. It wasn't that I didn't want to go. I had stuff I had to do today. I understand. Make, I'm not saying make that. The outing. Okay. Kingman. Kong. Oh, George that's... Foster was there, and I'm telling you, George Foster is bigger now. I mean, stronger. His forearms make me look like Twiggy. Really? And my forearms are pretty decent. He was always very slight. You know, he's one of those angular guys. Huge. Absolutely humongous. Oh, Big. That's, that is really, that's, I heard, I heard a rumor that Reggie was going to be there. But, you know, because those guys are busy, it's, you know, somebody has the best of intentions and something comes up in Omega, they don't, they don't want to publicize all that. These guys want to come in and play golf. Reggie Jackson, I'll tell you, Pepe Randolph with the Brewers, who does a lot for that outing, did a great job putting together those celebrities. Mark Sweeney's caught looking to start the bottom of the fourth, one away from Dave Coggin. Who else? Give me some other names. I love this stuff. Well, I, I just recognized a few of them. There, you know, a lot of different names out there. Now you're putting me on the spot. You're going to get me uh, in trouble with some of these guys. Well, no, I, you know, not that you omit anybody, but yeah, who else? Well, Hank Aaron. Who, who'd you talk with? Who'd you hang with? I actually hung out with my group. I ran into Jim Paschke, you know. Okay. Talked to Jim about some old times. Reggie Jackson, Dave Kingman, George Foster were there, and you were running around with Paschke. Yeah. <laughs> Jim will be just tickled to death well, if you know said what? that. You know what? Jim Paschke's a great guy, but you got a chance to, you know, well, what are you, you know hang with Mr. October, the well, straw that stirs the everybody drink. Everybody was doing that. What am I going to do? One of the minions going up to him with a baseball? Yeah. No. Oh, uh, see, too cool. Too cool. For you that. sit in the back of the room with Paschke and throw darts at people. <laughs> <laughs> Ball of two strikes to Jose Hernandez. Actually, it was on the driving range. Wasn't able to stay for the dinner. Oh, okay. Did those guys stay for the dinner? I don't know. I'd like to know what Reggie had for dinner. Whatever he wanted. That was a good time, though. Weather was beautiful. Bristlecone Pines was a great shape, and, and the Brewers did a great job putting out of Van Owen. And Hank. Hank Aaron out there. Full count, three balls and two strikes to Jose Hernandez. Louis Lopez on deck for the Brewers. Space is empty, one gone. I would imagine that it, it, it's probably not easy for Reggie Jackson to go to an event like that, or Dave Kingman, or George Foster, whomever, but certainly Reggie. Who is, you know, one of the all-time greats to go to an event like that and have any time to himself? Mm -hmm. Were people all over for autographs? Yeah, well, yeah, they were. That's why I kind of left him alone, George Foster. Two strikeouts for Dave Coggin to start the inning. National Sports Report features news, opinions, and highlights from a fresh perspective. It comes at you tonight at 10:30. Learn about all the major league scores, PGA championship coverage, and check in with the NFL training camps. It's a national sports report tonight at 10 30. There's Lopez now with two gone. Louis bounced out to the pitcher in the second. The Brewers got their run stringing together back to back hits with two out in the first. Good play at first by Travis Lee. Moving to his left nicely. It's a one, two, three frame for Dave Coggett, who has now retired seven in a row. To the fifth, 61 Phillies. True 522 is here, Rock. Having a good time. We need some runs. Troop 465. All the troops are here.
Top of the fifth inning, Brewers in a five-run hole. Lance Painter continues on the mound. He gets Burl, Lee, and Glanville. And a big wave and a miss by Pat Burl, 0-1. Burl has walked and doubled in a run tonight. Second year man, former number one draft choice. One of the big bats right in the middle of this lineup. Big swing and a miss. You know, speaking of big bats in Philly, when we were in Philly in May, I asked, I didn't have a chance to talk to Larry Boa, maybe tomorrow, but I asked Richie Hebner to ask Larry Boa to confirm a story. And here we are in August, and I went over to Richie today before the game, and I asked him if he talked to the skipper about it, and he said he forgot. And the story in question was, before an All-Star game in Philadelphia, there was uh, a batting practice session. This was before they had a home run derby mm -hmm. and all the pomp and circumstance they do now. When the American League team arrived, the National League team was hitting balls 500 feet, taking BP at the vet, hitting these bombs. And the story goes that either Pete Rose or Larry Boa, that's what I want to confirm, substituted the BP balls, the regular BP balls, with a batch of balls from Japan that were wound tighter, that they were a little smaller. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if they were used in the Japan League, but they were manufactured over there to give you more distance. So when the Reggie Jacksons and uh, Eddie Murray's and other power hitters of the era from the American League came onto the field and saw guys like Larry Bowen and Pete Rose hitting balls 500 feet. Their jaws just dropped open. Here's a payoff pitch home to Burl, swung on and lined into left. And a leadoff single for the Phillies. They put their leadoff hitter aboard now in two straight innings. Kind of psyched him out a little bit, huh? Yeah, I don't know if it uh, was effective, if it worked or not. But of course, the opposite of that would be putting the balls in the fridge or in the freezer before you send them out there for BP, tighten them up a little bit. Had a pretty tight relationship with Richie Hebner. No, no, not necessarily. Just thought I asked him about it. He managed a, uh, a team that I worked for in the minor leagues at one point. Here's Travis Lee now with a man on. Oh, that's a connection. I was just wondering why you think you would ask Hebner a question and he would go on and. As Bo and then relay the information to you. Yeah. You gotta have a you know, relationship with a guy in order to do that. Well, I don't know Larry Boa. You know Larry? No. Well, what say one of us ask him about it tomorrow? Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> a ball and a strike to the ambidextrous Travis Lee. Speaking of switch hitting and switch pitching, as it were, Lee is a left-handed batter. But he was an ambidextrous quarterback in high school and a highly decorated yo-yo player. But what, do, what do you call a guy that does a yo-yo? He's not a yo-yo player. Board. No, no, come on. I don't know what they call a yo-yo aficionado. Fish really aficionado, yo-yo aficionado. Yo-yoist. Two and two. Talking about yo-yos and it's the fifth inning. Well, that's the way it goes. Paschke call yet? <laughs> Full count three and two to Travis Lee. Time called at the last minute. Lee backs off and takes signs from John Vukovic in the third base coaching box. Phillies are thrilled to have John Vukovic back amongst their traveling ranks. 3 2 pitches fouled away. John Bukovic, the third base coach, quite a bit of a medical scare went through the early part of the season this year. Yeah, he missed significant time. 
and uh, everybody happy to have him back. Runner goes, pitch is swung on a miss. Blanco's throw down in plenty of time to ring up Pat Burrow, strike him out, throw him out. Two gone in the fifth. Yeah, one of the rare caught stealings for the Philadelphia Phillies. Only 29 times they've been caught. The second fewest now in the National League. They were tied with 28. Pretty good numbers when you consider they lead the National League in stolen bases. But Henry with a perfect throw. Got underneath the first one. Burrow really not a base stealer. Look at that. Might have been a hit and run and dead to rights at second base. Here's Doug Landville now with two away. Talking about the play that went bad. The 1 0 home to Glanville is in for a strike. by much two balls and a strike former Cub and a former Cub number one draft choice at that Blandle never stuck in Chicago came to the Phillies in exchange for Mickey Morandini a few years ago and gave the Phillies a pretty good center fielder Players who's uh, had that can't miss number one tag put on him, only to have things not work out according to plan. At least not with his initial major league stop. Yeah, a couple of years ago, Glenville had 204 hits, heck of a season. 100 runs scored, hit 325. And things have gone downhill for him since then. In that year, a couple of years ago, 99, the very good leadoff hitter. Into the corner and left. Sweeney has a beat on it, and that'll retire the side in the fifth. Middle of the night to the bottom of the fifth, 6 to 1 Phillies. Save big with MI Bank Kids and Seniors discount days, all kids 14 and under. I'm assuming she qualifies and seniors 60 and over get half off all reserved seats. Henry Blanco leads things off in the bottom of the fifth. Deep into left goes Pat Burrell to make the catch and there's one away. So one gone to start the bottom of the fifth for Dave Coggin who has been outstanding. Coggin is now retired eight in a row. Brewers are going to send up a pinch hitter now for Lance Painter. It'll be Lou Collier to swing the bat off the bench. Lou still looking for his first hit of the year since coming up from Triple A. Much a different looking bench for Davy Lopes at this point in the year than it was the last time the Brewers and Phillies met. A lot of veterans coming off that bench early in the year. Now it's a lot of young players. All those injuries have forced all the bench players to be starters. Now it's Mouton, Coolball, Brown, Luke Collier, Echeverria. Not a lot of experience on that bench anymore. Top of the order on deck behind Lou in front of Coggin, 2 0, and foul back. Dave Coggin, meanwhile, is pitching himself into one of those stretches similar to a stretch he was in in his last start, a winner over the Padres five days ago. At one point during that game, he had retired 15 in a row. Back up the middle and through for Sweet Lou. First knock of the season for Collier, a pinch hit, one out single in the fifth. Uh, 2 1 pitch that Lou waited back nicely on. That was a slider that stayed in the middle part of the part plate and banged it right through the box. Lou stand right on it and shooting it up the middle for a one out single. Uh, 
Good speed at first base and Luke Conger will see if Davey Lopes has him running here five run deficit for the Brewers. What Milwaukee needs is a sustained rally not necessarily an additional 90 feet today. Yeah station to station at this point. Five runs down in the fifth inning don't want to be stealing and getting thrown out. Devon White chops it to shortstop. Rollins charges and gets a throw to first in time to get Devo. Good play from Jimmy Rollins at short. Really good defense on the infield here with the Philadelphia Phillies. Travis Lee very good defensively. Rollins and Anderson up the middle and Glenville as good as it gets in center field. Makes that play look easy. Ron White really not running all that well. I think he's still bothered by that back. Collier at second now, two gone for Loretta. Talk about the good defense in the infield for the Phillies. Just a handful of errors up the middle between Anderson and Rollins. Line to third, that one hit right at Scott Rowland. More on the Phil's defense as we continue. We played five tonight, still six to one Phillies. Milwaukee Brewer Baseball on WCGV TV Channel 24 is sponsored by Menards. Save big money at Menards. And by Potawatomi Bingo Casino, play at a new level. Brewers on their third pitcher of the night. They got three and two thirds out of Alan LeBrault, an inning and a third out of Lance Painter, and have now turned it over to right hander Mike Buddy. Well, Buddy making his 13th appearance on the season, looking to suck up a couple of innings for Davey Lopes with the off day yesterday. Davey's got a fresh bullpen out there. You figure you guys are going to get into this one tonight. But he gets the switch hitting catcher Johnny Estrada to start it. Estrada then Coggin in top of the order Jimmy Rollins. A couple of late scores in the American League at this hour. A ninth inning score in that Twins Indian series game one of that big head to head matchup tonight and Cleveland leads Minnesota four to three in the ninth. Off the end of the bat to shortstop Hernandez in the hole plenty on the throw and he gets Johnny Estrada. Great play by Hernandez. Well, I made that one look easy too. Well, it's one thing getting that baseball but you got to have an awfully strong arm to make this throw off balance going away from first base. Can't set himself and makes an off balance throw right on the money and gets Estrada by plenty at first. Good play by Jose. There's a pitcher Dave Coggin now making his third plate appearance. Picks on the first pitch at two hopper back to Buddy. Hey, Buddy. Two gone. We were talking about John Vukovic over at third base. He, he was complaining about headaches during spring training this year and finally did an MRI on him during the season and found out that he had a mass, a kind of a lesion on the left rear of the side of his brain that he had to remove. Man. He was spent a lot of time on the disabled list with brain surgery. Came back on June 15th, missed 34 games. He had a tumor removed from his brain and missed only a month. Yeah. There's two gone for Jimmy Rollins now. I know in his absence, the Phillies were traveling with his uniform and hanging his jersey in the dugout during games just to make sure he was not forgotten by anybody on the traveling party. Well, the good thing about the good news about that tumor it was cancer free. Oh, under Rollins is yank foul. Speaking of Jimmy Rollins as a rookie of the year candidate, and he certainly is that. Along with Albert Pujols, we'll get uh, most of the consideration between those two guys. You're splitting up most of the votes right there. And had it not been for Pujols going crazy in April and May, and the Cardinals getting a lot of attention as it is. I think more people would be talking about Rollins as a favorite for the award. There's still a lot of baseball left to play. A lot of that might depend on which team is doing better. Phillies win the division. The Cardinals fade and Pujols doesn't hit the ball all that well. The tide may turn for him. 
Should that matter? There's there's an argument either way that uh, you know a guy should have to be a part of a winning team to get consideration for an no, award like that. Certainly doesn't matter, but it helps if there's a competition between two players, two rookies. I guess that should be taken into consideration. What did the games mean that he was playing in at the time? Two and two from Mike Buddy. Kevin Calvert Pulhos ends up with you know 40 home runs and 120 RBIs. Certainly he deserves it. But if it's close, I believe it will matter. There's a payoff foam with two gun of the bases empty, fouled away. It's talked about a lot, you know, guys on a on a losing club having a huge year. A best of the worst situation, not so much for the uh, Rookie of the Year award as it is for the MVP. The definition in my book of MVP is a guy who is most valuable to his team. Take his numbers away from the team, where would that team be? And if they were in last place, they'd be the same place, wouldn't they? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> no, no, really, that wouldn't matter. That's true. Almost like the manager of the year award. It's not just who gets the best record. It's who does the best with what he has. Mm -hmm. Here's ball four. Two out walk was a problem for Alan LeBrault earlier tonight. We'll see if Mike Buddy can overcome it. Yeah, fifth walk issued by Brewer pitching tonight. And three of them have scored. Well, you know, just to wrap up the discussion on the uh, National League Rookie of the Year and Jimmy Rollins as a candidate, Albert Pujols is hitting 331 with 28 home runs and 84 RBIs. Hands down. No argument here, partner. Yeah, I guess the uh, Phillies could go to the World Series, and Pujols has still put up too big a numbers to look past the fact that the Cardinals are struggling this year and had it not been for a couple of injuries in spring training pools still probably would be in the minor leagues all year. Mark McGuire and Bobby Bonilla both on a disabled list in the beginning of the year and McGuire at least not able to play right away. Gave him an opportunity. Well, it's funny the way things work out huh. Rollins likes to run. See if he's going with a five run lead here in the sixth inning. It's two balls and no strikes to Marlon Anderson. Rollins liking to run is an understatement. Leads the National League in stolen bases. In fact, he hasn't been caught since May 8th. He's stolen 32 straight without being nailed. That's a franchise record. Won't have a chance here as Loretta handles the ground ball for Marlon Anderson. And Buddy sets the Phillies down without an incident. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. The Brewers down by five. I'm a permanent part of Miller Park for just a $99 contribution to Brewers Charities. You sign your name or write a message on an official Major League Baseball and then put that ball on display at the Fan Zone Stores Autograph Alley. Jeremy Burnett leads things off with a clean single back up the middle. Second hit of the night for Bernie. Here's Richie Sexton now. This was the combination that played at the Brewers' one and only score back in the bottom of the first. Have made it three to one, and that's as close as the Brewers have been all night. Six one Phillies here in the sixth inning. Misses in. Dave Coggin, by the way, has made a start against the Brewers. He came up at the end of the season last year for what they call the Cup of Coffee. He made five starts last season, called up from AAA. He ran the whole gamut of minor league affiliates last year for the Phils. And one of the five starts he made at the major league level came against the Brewers on July 4th. He left trailing, but the Brewer bullpen couldn't hold the lead, so Coggin did not get a decision. The Phillies came back to win the game 7 to 4. And that was back at Old County Stadium. Good old, huh? Good old County Stadium. 
good old county stadium. How about that for time washing out your perspective on a place. <laughs> good old just because it's old doesn't mean it was ever good. Uh, served its purpose didn't it. Ain't nothing like coming back from a road trip and coming back here though. There's ball four to Sexton. Runners at first and second now. Maybe, maybe. Dave Coggin on the ropes for the first time tonight. He's been outstanding this evening. Doesn't walk too many. We talked about it. Only walked 16 coming in in almost 50 innings. 79 pitches, 33 balls, and 46 strikes. Not exactly the ideal ratio. But not bad. Burnett's at second. Sexton at first. Here's Mark Sweeney with that banged up lip and bloodied uniform. Some of the war wounds from tracking down a drive in left field. A chance for Mark to cash in with Ducks on the pond. And the first pitch to him is fouled away. Longest this year, by the way, an eight inning start. This is his third start of the season against the Blue Jays in an interleague contest. He lost that ball game in 11 innings, two to one to Toronto. And that stands out as among his best, if not his best start this year. Been strong tonight here in the bottom of the sixth. Sweeney to the shortstop hole for Rollins. Great play by Jimmy Rollins that for the time being has saved a run. Boy, that was a, a nice play. He got to the baseball, able to make the play and get Richie Sexton at second base. That's a base hit in most cases, but we talked about the middle of this infield being very good. They would have set himself and make an accurate throw to second base. That was one out of first and third to double play in order. Talked about this Philly defense being the best in the National League percentage points wise fielding percentage. They're showing you why tonight. Jose Hernandez now he's reached on an error and struck out runners at the corners for him with one away. That Indians Twins game is now a final and Cleveland hangs on to defeat Minnesota four to three. The Twins are starting their slide in the AL Central. Something nobody around here wants to admit. That's lined out to right. Abreu makes the catch. Bernie tags up. Throw to the plate. Not in time. An RBI on the sack fly by Jose Hernandez. Six to two Phillies. And Jose going to right field that time. He. Hit the ball to the right side, got on an error from Anderson in the second inning. It's a bullet to right, deep enough to score Burnitz for run number two for Milwaukee. Staying right on it, driving it that way. That's a good swing by Jose, and he's rewarded with a sacrifice flying an RBI. Here's Louis Lopez now in from the left side. Runner at first, two gone. Well, on the first pitch, he pops into left. Burl was very shallow. Has to retreat to make the catch, and the Brewers are done in the sixth inning. They do get one of the runs back, an RBI on the sack fly by Jose Hernandez. Smith to get four terrace reserve tickets, four sodas, and four hot dogs for only 30 bucks during Bank One Family Day. Tickets for the Brewers Rockies game that day must be purchased in advance by calling 902 4000. Those two little girls, the inspiration for Cindy Lou Who of Dr. Seuss fame. Look at those two. A correction on that Twins uh, Indians game. That's still going on. Yeah, that was my fault, partner. That's all right. It's in the ninth. I just chalked it up for Cleveland, thinking that the Twins, having been swept in four in Tampa Bay, were going to tank it anyway. So uh, <laughs> that's our mistake. That game's still going on. It's in the ninth inning. And guess what? The Twins have just tied it up. Oh, boy. Wow. Talk about having a slice of that crow pie. Well, that scoreboard out there in right field a little bit quicker than a computer tonight. 
And guess what? Even better than that, it's seven to three twins now. What's wrong with your computer? I don't know. It must be frozen. That's a day late and a dollar short. Seven four, seven four. Minnesota is the accurate score. We are an absolute mess on that game tonight. And we apologize to everybody in the Twin Cities who's watching us on satellite. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Scott Rowland leading off the seventh inning. Rowland Abreu and Burl here against Mike Buddy giving the Brewers a second inning in relief. Extra bases for Scott Rowland into the corner. He takes that turn at first heading into second. The NL's player of the week stays red hot. And Tucker went inside that third baseline. But he tried to sneak that fastball in on his hands. 31st double for Rowan this year. Well, you remember the pitch that struck him out his last time up. LeVron snuck a fastball in on his hands. He was ready for this one. Can't throw good hitters the same pitch in the same location too many times in a row. You know who gave it up for Cleveland? Uh, John Rocker. Rocker. Yes, he did. Well, I, again, I apologize for uh, jumping on the wrong score there, folks. That happens with the computer age here. We froze up. Everybody else had the right information. Here's Bobby Abreu now with a runner at second. Anything else we say tonight wrong? I mean, more wrong than usual? Well, Rocker gave up two. Bob Whitman gave up two. Ex Brewer. They both had troubles. Buddy out of the stretch with a runner on. Pitch to a Bray who misses low and down. Low and down. That's right from my Gorman Thomas book of uh, descriptive terminology. One and one. Huh. Gorman's a guy that coined the phrase the high sinker. High boy, sinker. He, every, he got jumped on for that boy. Everybody just buried him the next day when he showed up at the ballpark. Yeah. Gorman, show me how to throw that high sinker. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Gorman on that golf course was uh, ripping out some high sinkers yesterday. yesterday. Boy, he could hit a golf ball, that man. Yeah. Woo. What's he shoot? He's like a three or four handicap. Yeah, he's in his 70s. Plays on that celebrity tour. Was he at the Hank Aaron deal? Yeah. Oh, wow. Ugliest driver I've ever seen. Had a yellow head on and a purple shaft. Oh, the driver itself? Yeah. Not a, not a chauffeur. A yellow, a, a, a yellow, yellow head? A yellow head on it and a purple shaft. Oh, that sounds like one of those uh, kit. Things you make yourself with all the illegal uh, juice in there. Was that a legal club? I don't know. We're carting around one of those Ian Woosnam 17 club bags. <laughs> Fouled off the fist of Bobby Abreu. Still two and two. Talked to this guy before the game, Bobby Abreu. We were visiting about the uh, influx of Venezuelan players in the big leagues, Bobby being one of them. And one of the first of the new wave, if you will, of, uh, of Venezuelan players. And I told him, you know, when we had your guy, Ruben Cavedo, make his uh, major league debut and Henry Blanco catch him, we might have had the first all Venezuelan battery. Well, that doesn't have a chance to stay around here. Look at that. My goodness, just yanked that one into the second tier in right. Bobby Abreu's 25th of the year. Yeah, messing around with that inside corner, and a couple of times, Mike Buddy's gotten burned on it. Rolling with a double down the line. This time, Abreu able to elevate it. Watch where this pitch is. Inside part of the plate, Abreu waiting for it. Nice short swing and almost up into the do deck in the third deck in Miller Park. Didn't miss by much. That ties a career high for Bobby Abreu, 25 home runs on the season. 
as we mentioned well on his way to establishing new career highs in home runs and runs batted in. Eight to two Phillies here's Pat Burrell. So we're talking about the uh, Venezuelan starting battery that the Brewers threw out there the other night with Ruben Cuevedo and Henry Blanco and he said come on there have been plenty of Venezuelan catchers out there before Henry. Carlos Hernandez the veteran the ex Dodger ex Padre ex uh, Cardinal. Remember Bo Diaz. Yeah. Bo Diaz. Venezuelan player. Was he in Baltimore when you were around here. Where was he playing. I don't remember where he was. The fly ball in center for Devon White. And there's one away. Weeknights it's totally NASCAR your exclusive all access garage pass with 30 minutes of NASCAR news and highlights and the latest developments on what's gearing up for this week's race. Totally NASCAR weeknights at six only on Fox Sports Net. Travis Lee the batter now. Lee's driven in three runs tonight. One came on a sack fly in the first and as Bill's talked about that's been something of a theme for the Philly offense this year. And two of the RBIs came on a double in the third Travis Lee having himself a nice night. Travis Lee was one of the players that came to the Phillies from Arizona compensating in the Kurt Schilling trade sent the perennial all star to the desert. One of the other guys that came to the Phillies in that deal Omar Dahl will make a start tomorrow. Jamie Wright draws him on the mound for the Brewers. Grounded to Loretta who throws to first for out number two. It's Jamie Ryan and Omar Dahl tomorrow and then on Thursday an afternoon game. It'll be Ruben Cavedo to make his third start as a brewer and he'll draw Nelson Figueroa on the mound for the Phillies. People are really looking forward to Ruben's third start as a brewer after such a tremendous go around in Montreal this weekend. Yeah, he was awesome. Going to baseball well, came up with a third pitch, a split fingered fastball. Caught everybody by surprise. Rolled out to Sexton. A slide better than the speedy Glanville. Richie had to get in there, slide to the bag. Lambo runs well. The two run home run by Bobby Abreu, however, makes it eight to two Phillies. Phillies, as we wrap up the seventh inning stretch here at Miller Park, let's bring you up to speed on the scoring. The Phillies started with three in the first, one of them here on a Pat Burrell RBI double. Richie Sexton single in a run in the Brewer half of the first to get it back to 3 1, but the Phillies have run it up ever since. Travis Lee with a two run double in the third. That made it 5 to 1 Philly. 6 to 1 Philly on this unusual play. Dave Coggin bunting. Alan LeBron throwing it away at third. That scored Johnny Estrada. It was 6 to 1 at that point. A two run home run by Bobby Abreu in the seventh. And the Brewers adding one in the sixth. And runs it at 8 2 on the Toyota game summary here. Dave Coggin living up to Billy, keeping the ball in the ballpark, not walking anybody. He's walked. One tonight. Making the Brewers work their way on. Boy, Henry fouling that 1 1 pitch away. It looked like he almost got a piece of one of the bad boys down there on the Philly dugout. Grounded out to Jimmy Rollins. And one away. Pinch hitter now against Coggin here in the seventh for Milwaukee. Angel Echevarria will swing it off the bench. Angel will likely be out there to start tomorrow against the left hander Omar Dahl. You know how 
we mentioned uh, Travis Lee and Omar Daw came over to the Phillies in that shilling trade last year. Well, the guy that starts on Thursday, Nelson Figueroa, also came from the Diamondbacks in that deal. So the Brewers will see the full complement of players that came over in that trade. Trade starting at first and the other guys pitching. Yeah, that trade's worked out very well for both teams, hasn't it? it sure has. That's what his trade is supposed to do. You trade a superstar like Kurt Schilling, you get multiple talents and uh, multiple players in return. Yeah, that did work out well. It really did. That's not like the A's trade Mark McGuire for T.J. Matthews, Eric Ludwig, and Blake Stein. You know that right off the top of your head, don't that you? That one, not so good. Because that was one of the worst trades in Major League history, my friend. <laughs> two balls and two strikes to Echeverria. And you know what? That's to take nothing away from those three pitchers. But that is not commensurate market value. Three and two. Oh, and by the way, Oakland's winning. I, I did not ask you that. Did I ask you that? We were heading there. How about Minnesota and Cleveland? It's all tied at sevens. All tied at sevens. Sevens, he says. Cleveland's still batting. As if Rio lays off ball four. The one out base runner for the Brewers. Why does it say it's tied up at fours out there in the outfield? Very slow. Like this computer of mine. I got to get a hold of the top frame. We haven't looked at this thing. Good luck. Try the comic book store. Here's Devon White, top of the order for the Brewers. One out, one on. Debo still looking for his hit tonight. In the National League, the Cubs and Astros are playing in a good one. That one's tied at one apiece in the seventh. Battle for first place in the National League Central. Speaking of St. Louis, they lead the Reds 7 0 in the eighth. still have plenty of looks left at St. Louis and Cincinnati this year. St. Louis is four and a half back. Still there. There's ball four to Debo. Back to back walks by Dave Coggin. And he's walked as many tonight as he had in his previous three starts. Activity in a hurry out in that Philly bullpen. See pitching coach Vern Rule scurrying about behind manager Larry Boa, who's going to go out and chat. It looked like Jose Santiago and Eddie Oropesa that were up in the throwing. I think Boa's got a hook in his hand. are going to make a move. They want the right hander Santiago. They'll be offered Dave Coggin. He pitched well tonight for the Phillies. Done after seven and a third. He leaves with two men on. We'll be right back. Well Dave Coggin's night is done. He allows two runs on five hits. He leaves with a couple of base runners out there is his responsibility and turns things over to the right hander Jose Santiago here in the seventh. Yeah, Santiago a sinker slider type pitcher but a good job by Coggin tonight. Thirty second game for a right hander no saves three point nine two ERA two and two record keeps the ball in the ballpark giving up three home runs and twenty strikeouts in forty one and a third innings. Santiago's been throwing the ball well. Over his last 10 games, he's allowed just a 2.57 ERA that covers 14 innings. Jose Santiago, most recently of the Kansas City Royals, 
And he came to the Phillies in early June to shore up the bullpen in exchange. Worked out well for both teams. Bird has pitched well for Kansas City since changing uniforms. Mm -hmm. One ball and no strikes. Accounts of Mark Loretta trying to pick up a couple of the base runners. Echeverria at second. White at first. 2 0. Oh. Santiago's well, got a lot of confidence in that slider. Keeps that sinker down and very good for situations just like this. Phillies needing a ground ball. Another breaking ball, two and two. Chance to drop. Abreu gets to it, however, two away. Yeah, Loretta hitting in some tough luck here tonight. He lined out the third bases last time up, and Abreu making a nice play running toward the line to take away a bloop single for him. Well, Loretta making contact on the two strike pitch inside out, a sinking fastball, but look at Abreu with the good wheels. He's got 30 stolen bases, able to make the play. Defense, defense, defense. Well, that'll bring up the only Brewer with a multiple hit line on his day, and that's Jeremy Burnitz. Burnitz got two of the five Brewer knocks tonight, and he scored both of the Brewers' runs. Doubled in the first, singled in the sixth. Just misses the inside corner, 2 0 from Santiago. Sexton on deck with two away. Bear in mind, Larry Boa had a left hander up. But with a six run lead, only two men 